In this video, we're gonna explore five awesome Jamboard ideas that's gonna help you build your classroom culture and also demonstrate student understanding. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Mr. Cook's Corner, education for educators. This channel is all about helping teachers like you grow in your craft. If this is your first time watching, welcome aboard. Please consider subscribing if you like what you see today. I wanted to focus on something that we could roll out right now. I've got five great ideas for Google Jamboard and ways to use them to help you build some classroom culture and also to help students demonstrate their understanding. So without further ado, let's explore five great Google Jamboard ideas for the classroom. And the first one is setting up icebreakers and daily check-ins. Before we get started, I just wanna let you know right now that everything you see in this video is gonna be available to you in the description. I've got a link to all 17 files. They're PNG files. You can use them in slides or here in Google Jamboard like I'm about to show you. So just check out the description and let's get you hooked up. So this first section is all about icebreakers and you can do this a number of ways. It works virtually and it works in person. I prefer to actually share the link out to your class and that way when you post the link, to your Zoom or your Meet or even in person with their laptops, they can get on and work on this in real time. The purpose is collaboration here. So that's one way to do it. If you don't wanna share the link, what you can do instead is take answers from students as they post them in the chat of your Zoom or your Meet or as they say them out loud and you can enter them in here for them. Regardless of what you choose, the way you enter information is simple. You either do a text box, click where you want it, put your answer and from there you can rotate it you can resize it, all that fun stuff. Choice two is to do a sticky note. You click on it. Once you choose what you want, you can drag and drop it. You can resize it. This is my personal choice because you can change the colors. You can have things represent girls and boys. You can have team green, team yellow, team blue. So the premise with icebreakers are to post these to your class and get them in situations where they talk or debate. So here we have, would you rather? So you could put silly things like from the books that I'm sure so many of you have seen. You put choice one here choice two here, and then students put the stickies where they think they should go. A second idea would be to use a four corners category. Put a topic in the middle, give them four choices, and let them virtually walk to the corner of their choice. Again, if you're in person, you can still do this. Just project it to the board and have students in the classroom, socially distant of course, move to where they can. A third icebreaker is just your typical question of the day, and this is cool because what you can do with Jamboard is once you're done with one question of the day, you post it here, students will put all their stickies, you would just go here and you could actually duplicate it and just have another question of the day and you could have it go on and on and on. You could do an entire Jamboard full of questions of the day, and then as the year goes by, you're building out this amazing resource that they can go back to and look and see what their answers are and you can revisit them. And lastly, the ultimate icebreaker to me is the All About Me page. You've seen the worksheets before. This one's a little bit more interactive and it's a little bit more engaging because it's open-ended. Students can come over to the side. They can insert sticky notes. They can also insert pictures if they want to do a Google image search. They have a lot of free range to just have this blank canvas and do what they want. So what you would do in this case is you would make this slide and you would copy paste it as many times for as many students as you have and then they would just put their sticky with a name in the corner and you would build out an entire class all about me. One of the first things you're probably going to want to do as a teacher on any given year is to build out your classroom expectations, routines, procedures, and rules. But of course you want to include your students in this process. Let's take a look at our second item on the list as to how Google Jamboard can help you with doing just that. As we just mentioned, having a democratic classroom where students have voice and say and setting up what they want their classroom to be like is paramount to having a solidly managed classroom system. And I always like the classics. So one way is to start with the classic question of what should our class look like? You have a discussion with kids, they're all logged on, they each go in and put a sticky note, you give them a few minutes. Once they're all posted, then you go about and share some of the answers and you can even organize them and categorize them. You then move on to the next one, which is what should our class sound like? And this is when you get into things like voice levels and how people speak to one another and taking turns. All those things that you would do normally with your easel in a classroom with a group on the carpet, you would do here online. And I even put that here even online because this year you're gonna be spending that time mostly in a Zoom or a Meet setting. 
And to go along and finish the trio of questions, it's how would you like to be treated? A simple question that students, again, go in with their stickies, post their answers, you look for similarities, you cluster and group them together, and you develop the conversation as a group. Two of my favorite questions in building class culture and expectations are to ask them, what are your strengths? And you'd be surprised how often that they've never been asked that question before. So you want to lead with that. And then you want to follow with how do you learn best? This is great insight to figure out how are your students learning? Are they visual? Do they need things repeated to them? Do they need to work with a friend? Are they more individualized? These are great ways to get this documentation and have it on file and ready to refer to as you start your year. Number three on our list is a great way for students to be able to check in with you without you having to answer something right off the bat in the middle of a Zoom or a Meet. Let's take a look. This third idea is the question wall for the teacher, and this is an ongoing throughout the year slide. And what we do here is we put this up somewhere on your website or have the link in your Google Classroom to where it's always accessible. Students can come in and they can post sticky notes with questions for you. They can be funny questions, they could be academic questions, they could be just about anything that you set the parameters to. When you have time, you go in and answer a few a day or a few a week, you leave the answers posted, and then all you do is duplicate this slide when you run out. On the next slide, you've got answers from the teacher. So what you do is you take the first slide here, move the questions that you've answered over to this slide, and then again you duplicate and duplicate, and as the year goes on you build this giant encyclopedia of things that have been asked you, and you can always refer back to them. And this way it just builds a getting to know you as a teacher, as well as gives students input. Number four on our list takes a look at checking for understanding, and using Google Jamboard there are a number of ways that we can do this. The cool thing about Jamboard is that you can pull these things up at any time, link it in the chat, and students can hop on and just put a sticky or even just draw a tally mark as to how they're feeling about something. This is one example, checking in, thumbs up, thumbs down. Another one that I like is just the simple green, yellow, red. You've seen these before. Green means I'm all good. Yellow means I'm getting there. Red means I need help. A great way to do this is when you're finished with a lesson, you leave the link in either Google Classroom or you post it in the chat. And as they progress through it, they can drop a sticky with their name and you can monitor this. That way you're free to do small groups on the side. And as you see people start to post, you can peel off and go help them as needed. And the last one is just a classic exit ticket. You can post a question here. You can just have this set at the end of the day before you go. You need to say X, Y, and Z. It's a really simple way to gauge understanding for your students. Let's take a look at using graphic organizers within Google Jamboard. I've got three classic examples to show you and you could take it a number of ways. Here's your Venn diagram and you could pre-populate this with stickies of examples of A, B, or both and students can go drag and drop whenever they need to or you could have them come up with the answers on their own. These are one of those things where you can put them in groups, label your Jamboard slides and have kids go into each one work together to come up with answers. One of my favorite graphic organizers is the Freyer model. It's a really simple way to have kids really dig deep into a word and get to know the meaning of it. You've got examples, non-examples, the definition and characteristics. Now you could do this as an entire vocabulary set. You could have a slide for each word, or you could again have kids work in groups to build these out together. Lastly, I gotta show love to all my writing teachers out there. I got 12 years of fourth grade under my belt, and let me tell you, this is one of the hardest things you're ever gonna teach, but this is a great way to continually check for where students are in the process. You simply make a sticky of every student's name, and they just drag it to wherever they are in the process. Remember, you can size and shrink the sticky so it won't get too big and take up too much space. But you post this in your Google Classroom, and kids can pull it up anytime, and they can adjust where they are, and you can go back and check, and then go in and meet with your kids whenever you need to. As always, we got lots more where that came from. Why don't you check out one of these two videos right here to get yourself started. In the meantime, we're all over social media at Mr. Cook's Corner. Until then, see you next time. Bye.